Uh, next item is the short-term guest accommodation issues and options. This was a uh, report from regulatory performance, so I'll hand over to you, Jamie. Yes, um, happy to move, obviously, what's there. Is that slight amendment with just changing um, visitor accommodation for more than 120 days, than available than 120 days, and that's just simply to align that with Auckland, easier to trace, occupied than available. Um, there's no paper trail for available, but there is for days booked, and the occupied mitigates against the effects, uh, but available doesn't. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll take the paper as read, um, it's relatively straightforward, but this is really about getting the ball rolling to put um, visitor accommodation uh, that are operating with online websites um, outside, in a lot of cases, from the city plan on, on a uh, even playing field with uh, um, the hotel sector. So something needs to be done around this, and it's probably bigger than Christchurch, I think we can all appreciate. Um, so you also note that there is a, um, a paragraph there to work with local government to try and find a, a nationwide approach to this. Sorry? Central government and local government New Zealand. No, that's all right. Um, same, same. Anyway, staff are here to answer any questions. Yeah. Um, Rev. Yeah, thanks for this. Um, did you look at um, proposals to actually charge through the platforms like Airbnb, where they have suggested that they will actually just charge a per day um, fee, if you like, rather than because it's so complicated trying to track all these places, and that seems to be a more efficient way to approach it? Um, that would effectively be a bed tax, and um, we have spoken with Airbnb, uh, and they are, on the face of it, willing to be as helpful as they can, but um, I think that goes beyond the um, level of assistance they were willing to provide us with. So, yeah, it's a matter of... Um, if we provide them with a, a... We can't even get a link, for example, on their front page to our requirements so we're working on that to get that in but their level of assistance is um has limits yeah, i mean because they're the ones who've actually promoted this i mean they've talked about it and i think this is not the only platform distributor that we're going to have to deal with and a lot of these are overseas based corporations the government's yep. looking at some kind of digital tax approach to this so we could end up chasing our tail on every new thing that comes out, trying to work out how to rate yep. for it, and it's actually impossible. So I think if you're having discussions with central government, I'd be certainly having that conversation, because they will have um, relationships with these organisations. And, and central government um, requirements um, at a nationwide level would certainly help our um, management of this. And mm. if they required all online providers to um, do X, Y and Z, uh, that would make life a whole lot easier for all councils. I mean, I think because, you know, services like this are not just disrupting traditional forms of business, they're disrupting tax collection yeah. processes as well, which is impacting local government taxation as well. So that's yep. a real challenge, and maybe the Productivity Commission looks at it in the funding yeah. review. Yeah. And, you know, otherwise, you're going to be going door to door it's just it's not going to work out, is it? Um, no, the, the current um, monitoring uh, options we have available aren't ideal. That's, that's certainly correct. Okay. Yeah. Phil? Um, just like so that every option is fully considered and, and um, as Raf has indicated, perhaps discussions with central government, I'm just um, a bit concerned that in fact we don't progress this faster in terms of the communication with central government, apart from number, fi number five, that, that, that we'd advocate at the uh, New Zealand local government conference by a remit. It, can we not also include a way to actually ensure that in fact we do have some direct communication with central government mm. over this nation, New Zealand wide issue? Well, I mean, a part of that will be the submission to the um, Productivity Commission's um, review of uh, the financing of local government, so it will it will come up in that context. It's bound to. So um, I, I don't know that we need to add to this, but um, we've got to advocate to the relevant ministers directly as in there, in the resolution. It's not just raising it at the conference, but to advocate to the relevant ministers directly. So we will pick that up.
It, I don't think it's necessary. We're going to make a submission. I think it closes in February, does it? Yeah, so we've got plenty of time and, um, yeah, <laughs> Christmas reading. You're all expected to be fully au fait with... Um, it, it <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Tim. Thank you. I mean, with regards to the, um, the heading of the paper, guest accommodation issues and options, the, the, the residents from Richmond came with concerns with regards to the, the number of an, the, the building, etc., and the number in the area and the change to their communities. Because one of the things that we looked as a council in our district plan was getting a huge amount of people living in our central city and building those communities. Do we, have, we are very different to any other city in New Zealand with regards to the rebuild and the prolification of all these types of um, builds, these small apartments, etc., in one hit rather than organically happening. So are we somehow looking at those communities and talking to those established communities and the effects that, that these are going to have and are having? Well, I, th I think the next step for the, um, the district plan is, is to continue to do some more research. Um, at the moment, we can't do a plan change, but we can start to do some of the engagement with the communities and think about what some of the options would be. Because, um, I mean, the, the, the thing that, you know, wherever you look at in the world, irrelevant to Christchurch, we are unique in the fact that we are suddenly rebuilding a, a huge number of small apartments, which are, I guess, ideal if you're looking at the Airbnb structure and process and how that will affect those communities to try and build them. So I guess, what are your thoughts on that? I think the district plan at the moment is, is does have a number of objectives uh, and policies around trying to protect residential amenity. So I think it's a question in, in looking at the district plan rules of the extent to which they're achieving that at the moment um, and whether or not um, there's, there's any changes that, that need to be made to, to better protect that amenity. So if we could really look at that, because it does, does seem for the residents that have come in that, that the, the district plan isn't covering that, their concerns. So I think that we should focus, have a focus on that for sure. Thank you. So, um, Andrew? Clearly there are a number of issues at play here. Um, the, um, the, the regulatory environment obviously is one thing that will be considered in the report that will come back if we pass these resolutions. Um, the ability to enforce is one of the things that's called out quite clearly in the report and clearly there are some difficulties with enforcement under the current regime um, and identification of those properties which would fall under any category in any new regime obviously is another matter to be considered. Can we be assured in requesting this report to come back that those things will be given significant weight um, in terms of any recommendations in that report. I kind of turned my mind to the experience we've had in Freedom Camping, where you know we passed a perfectly good bylaw, but we then didn't have the resources to effectively enforce. Um, can, can we be absolutely clear that your considerations in preparing the report we're requesting today will take identification and enforceability into account as kind of key guiding principles? Yeah, um, that will be covered in that report because at the moment the rating of these properties as businesses is theoretically possible but we are well aware there are practical challenges and those challenges need to be brought, as you say, in detail to Council to, for you to weigh up um, just what your options are going forward. Right. Any other questions? Now, uh, Jamie, you're happy to move that? Yep, happy to move. Seconded by Dion. I'll Can you just speak to yeah, I was just going to say, is there any discussion? Yeah. So Dion and then Tim, is it? Yeah. You know, I'm good. Pauline. I'm glad to see this uh, coming to to council and actually some more work to look at this in depth because it is a really complicated issue. Um, that is affecting a lot of people that, that I represent in the central area uh, because you know there is a there is a, you know that tension between the development and getting you know allowing this to, these things to happen and then the amenity that people have in their, their residential neighbourhoods and that tension is something that we do need to sort of you know look at and find ways through. So it's really good to see that this is you know, coming back. But I mean I. I do wonder, you know, we have existing rules and there are 696 properties right now that are breaking those rules and it's a shame that we can't enforce that. 
and that's the one thing that I really want to sort of get back really quickly, is actually how can we enforce that a little bit easier and actually slap something on these people and say, look, you're breaking the rules that are actually existing, that are in our district plan right now. Um, you can't do what you're doing. So, I mean, I think that's something that I'd like to see back really quickly. Tim? Thank you, Lloyd. It's really good to have this paper, and thank you for all the work that you're doing on it. But do keep in mind that this paper is purely about how we are going to look at regulating or how we're going to look at um, uh, charging, etc., and the rates. Is it going to balance it, or how we can balance between part time and full time Airbnb, how it's going to affect and uh, get in line with regards to the hotel and motel um, sector as well. But what it doesn't cover and what we need to really look at is how it is affecting the communities which we are trying to build for for the future, which it is not doing, and we, and through our district plan, just from the comments, is absolutely not doing. But also those communities that are established and are healthy communities have been through a lot and now are being affected and very um, very much affected by all the, these so-called new new builds which perhaps don't have enough car parking, etc. Because we had a vision of electric cars, everyone busing, etc. But chicken and an egg, there is a huge separation between our chicken and our egg. So I think there has to be a lot of work on this. Thank you. Um, Pauline? Glenn, Andrew, yeah, um, David. <laughs> you're just looking at this. I, I, I will reluctantly support it. I prefer really just to go down the track of five and working with the Productivity Commission on this because I'm worried about the workload for this. I mean, currently we do reactively enforce uh, the uh, regulations that we have at the moment, um, but um, I guess this is preparing for the way forward. I don't want to get into an Airbnb bashing either because. I mean, we talk about communities, but Airbnb offers a certain slice of that. You know, you get a transient nature that great people come to our city and we want to welcome them. And Airbnb within the uh, CBD is a wonderful thing. And, and you have all different um, tiers of the accommodation sector, and Airbnb is just one of those. And it's a bit like when you have a whole lot of cafes or hospitality uh, venues in one area. It seems to attract even more custom to them all. So I think the more accommodation options that we have, the better. Um, so, but I will today support this to, to come through because I don't want to relitigate what was decided in the committee. Um, Glenn, and then Andrew and David. Thank you. Uh, I support this today. It seems to have quite a procedural element to it, given that it's going to be taking a deep dive with the uh, Finance Committee. I asked for a briefing on this at the Housing Subcommittee, which we had, and um, to date there is no discernible impact on the rental market. So. But we obviously need to keep uh, close watch on it. I think it's it's really important we do uh, undertake this work for a whole lot of reasons, as per the report and which have been articulated today. But also including the fact that there might be uh, some kind of you know some Trojan horse developments going on out there, which actually are going to become Airbnb, which we don't uh, necessarily know about. So yes, uh, important we do this and support, especially. Uh, number five to get a nationwide approach to this. Uh, Andrew. Thank you. Um, as I alluded to in my question, um, you know, whilst this may look as though it's about <coughs> regulation, it's actually about having regulations that work. Um, it's about having the ability to identify the various categories of properties that we um, may create in any regulation, and it's about having regulations which are capable of being enforced um, without the need for huge resources to do that or an overly cumbersome process to achieve the outcomes that we're wanting to see as we put those regulations in place. So I'm pleased to hear that all that will be um, well considered. Clearly there's a big difference between um, an Airbnb type property where somebody is living in a property and they've got a spare room that they're using to, to rent out and get an additional short term income from and a property which is purchased purely for the purpose of bin short term accommodation and that's the only reason for the property being held, owned and the purpose of the property is to create that, um, that short term rent. So I'm sure those will be things that will be picked up in the report as well. At the same time, I think we need to realise that the accommodation sector now has a lot more facets than it used to in the past. 
Um, there are the traditional hotels, and there always will be a space for traditional hotels, I'm sure, but Airbnb is very much the way of the future. I think the challenge that we've got is coming up with a set of regulations that make it very clear that there are different types of properties that need to be handled in different ways to enable certainty for people that choose to operate in this environment, and at the same time to make sure that we find the right balance between the traditional accommodation sector and um, Airbnb and associated platforms, which certainly in my view are the way of the future and are definitely here to stay. So I'm pleased to support these recommendations today, and I particularly welcome the report coming back and I'll be um, keeping a very interested eye on how this progresses. Uh, David? Uh, thank you. Yes, I, I, I support the thrust of the uh, report as well and uh, where this paper is taking, to us, uh, taking us to. Um, I also think, you know, it sort of ties in well with some, um, the action plan for the city that's coming out in the, in the new year where we are identifying aspects of our... Uh, district plan that need to um, have some revision. Um, and so it certainly does sort of concern me when we are looking to uh, reinvigorate our central city and encourage people to be living in the central city, yet we see some of these um, um, buildings that are being developed at the moment and they are advertising them for sale as some of them as Airbnb, potentially Airbnb units. So. Um, I'm very keen on going forward to, to look at um, our district plan and, and see how we can um, make some changes that clearly reflect the intention of the uh, redevelopment of the city and, and avoid um, some of these um, uh, buildings that are being marketed especially for, uh, as well for B Airbnb. So, uh, yeah, support the, the paper that we've got going forward, but also uh, very keen to look at uh, the district plan uh, when we can get our hands on it again and uh, and do some work in this area. Very good. Um, Sarah, yeah, are you going to wrap up the debate, Jamie, so I'm, I'll close it with you. Yeah, Sarah? Just, just um, really briefly, let's not overcomplicate this. It's about enforcing our current rules and being able to have the tools to be able to do that, and it's about applying fair rates to those operating a business. Um, and that's the crux of the matter there. And let's not um, overcook and overstate some of the, the impacts here. It's really clear from the surveys we've had that for those who even recognise that there's Airbnbs or similar operating in their neighbourhoods, very few have issues with them. And a higher rate of issues is actually for um, high rental proper properties in the area um, rather than for the Airbnb style. And so um, people have more issues with um, higher rental properties in the area than, than they do with Airbnbs. So let's not overcomplicate it, let's not overcook it, let's just get a bit of work done, enforce the rules, get people to pay fair rates and be done with it. Jamie? Jamie, wrap it up. <laughs> um, glad to see that um, the pragmatic change I think has been made, that it's around the effect, not the intent, which was just the alignment of the days occupied as opposed to available. But with that, I'm happy for staff to further explore this. I'm not dead keen for us to lead the charge on reinventing the wheel, because ultimately, I think we all agree that this is bigger than Christchurch, it's bigger than a region. It's going to take a nationwide approach to deal with it. Um, and as Sarah said, and I completely agree, um, let's not overcomplicate it. This is, this is quite simply also about enforcing the rules that we have. But finally, I will stress that our intent is to not start rating a property owner who occasionally rents out a room or their batch here and there on Book a Batch or Airbnb, but it's to place uh, commercial accommodation providers on a similar keel to those that buy a property for the sole purpose of running a hotel room or a motel room year-round. Anyway, I think um, this is a, a good place to start, uh, and it's going to be a big piece of work, but uh, thanks to staff for the work that you've done on this as well. Excellent. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you.